we're here at CES 2014 talking with Eric Grislow of Soft Kinetic about 3D scanning. Um, so Soft Kinetic develops a whole host of 3D scanning applications and they've recently announced a partnership with MakerBot to create some 3D scanning um, desktop applications. And um, Eric's going to tell us a little bit about what Soft Kinetic does and um, what they've been working on so far. Initially we are developing uh, time of flight technologies so 3D sensors based on time of flight technology. And that technology is really interesting because it can do a lot of different things. We started with the gesture recognition mm -hmm. and now we are moving to other type of applications. So one of them, one of the most important ones for, for us is 3D scanning, really data acquisition from uh, the, the outside, outdoor world. Mm -hmm. And uh, for that we can uh, really work with time of flight and tweak it, adapt it to that new type of application. Excellent. So tell us a little bit about what time of flight is and how it differs, differs from other types of 3D scanning that yeah. are currently on the market. Yeah, yeah. So time of flight is a very simple technology. The principle is very simple. It's really about measuring the time that the light takes to get out of the camera, bounce on the object and return to the sensor. And so each pixel of the sensor is capable of measuring the time that the, t the, the light took to do the distance. So each pixel is giving you a distance and so based on that then you can start to reconstruct objects uh, very fast and very accurately. Excellent. And what are some of the other types of 3D scanning that are out there and how are they different? Yeah, so there are a lot of different techniques to acquire data uh, in 3D. Mm -hmm. uh, stereoscopic vision, uh, structural light, uh, but also laser-based uh, scanners. Um, and so here what we are doing is that we are acquiring a lot of information at the same time and very fast because the sensor can acquire uh, 60 frames per second or even higher, so you can really move uh, the camera and uh, the scanner very fast around the object and go very fast for, for your scanning. And uh, as it's a handle device, you can really scan big objects as well. You are not limited to a, you know, a turntable type of scanner, uh, so it's very flexible in that way. Excellent. Um, so will this result in more, more detailed and kind of more precise type of scans? Yeah, yeah absolutely. So we are uh, modifying our technology, or adapting our technology really for scanning to improve mainly the accuracy of the, the details that you can capture. And um, because of time of flight is flexible, for instance, you can go very close to the object you want to scan and then immediately you, you, um, you acquire more, more details of the object that you are scanning. And you can also go further away to capture a larger scene. Mm -hmm. So that's really the beauty of time of flight. It's very flexible in, the, in that way. Excellent. Yeah. So does time of flight scanning have the same limitations as the other types? You know, shiny objects don't scan well mm -hmm. and, and all of those limitations? Yes, indeed, it's not, I mean, we have some limitations that we need to, to work around. Mm -hmm. uh, like, as you said, you know, reflective objects, very reflective objects can, can be a, a, an issue, you know, because while walking with light, mm -hmm. um, it's like a mirror. When you are looking at your, yourself in the mirror, you think that you are at twice the distance of where you really are. Ah. Yeah, so that, that kind of uh, um, uh, situation can be a problem, but uh, by combining time of flight with uh, a regular RGB sensor, mm -hmm. we can overcome all those issues and, uh, and come to a really a very good solution. Fantastic. Well, we know this is an active development, and we're really looking forward to seeing what comes out yeah, of your partnership. Great. Thank you.